I just love the voice of the solo acoustic guitar. There's something powerful about vibrations. What we do, playing music for people, is a very important job in our life. It's good. Make sure all the tuning pegs are in line. No. <laughs> It really feels different mentally approaching it like this. So there's lots of things that you can do to help. Hey everybody, this is Ben Harper here and you're watching The Guitar Show. I knew when I was really small, I knew that that's all I ever wanted to do. And there was never any question. And, uh, you know, it's been, a, it's been a wonderful journey with this instrument. It, it, the guitar doesn't change, we, we change. You, know, you pick up the guitar one day and you feel like a master, and you pick it up the next day and you feel like a dunce. Angelina. First thing I heard that I really loved was uh, Marty Robbins' El Paso, and um, that was a, there was a great player on that, um, uh, Grady Martin, and 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 he had a had a beautiful style. Um, and then I heard the Shadows and the Ventures, and Dwayne Eddy, and then I heard Chet. And by the time I'd got to Chet, it it, it just totally took me off in another direction, you know and forever changed the way that that I listened to guitar or, or that I listened to a song. You know, I, I learned about song construction, about uh, getting a tone and all those kind of things and, and having a quality control about your playing. I got all that from Chad. I remember I used to slow some of, some of Chad Atkins' tracks down especially when he was doing this, those kind of things, you know. Um, I just didn't know how he was doing it. And uh, so once I piled enough coins on the turntable and slowed it right down, then I could hear that he was and speeding it up, right? When I first heard him play, um, I could tell it was all being done at once, but I just didn't quite know how he was doing it, you know. And uh, so I actually figured it out with a, with a plectrum first, and uh, and then I got to the thumb pick. So you play the, the thumb part separate like that. You should make a noise that resembles boom chick, boom chick, boom chick, boom. Okay. So you keep that nice and steady thumb there, and then you bring in. was the first thing I heard him play and then I heard uh and of course there was uh, let's see Thank you. 
was uh, young, I can remember travelling a lot, not having a lot to eat, but always being happy and uh, enjoying being on stage. You know, that was a thing for me. I, I always loved being on stage and I felt that that's where I belonged. And I was six. I was the rhythm player and, uh, and the bass player. And uh, Phil was the lead player. He was eight. And uh, Virginia played the um, Hawaiian steel, the lap steel. And she sang a little too if we wanted to empty the room. And, uh, and then my eldest brother, Chris, played the drums. Dad tried to be a comedian for about five minutes. And uh, actually, my, my parents were in the iron and steel business. Mum used to iron and Dad used to steal. Boom, boom. <laughs> Entertainment is an important part of being on stage, you know, you, when you walk on stage you have an obligation to the people sitting down there, they've paid money and they want to have a good time and they want to see you do what, what you do. Entertaining people is is uh, a great privilege. I've always loved playing the solo acoustic guitar. And, and I write in such a way that everything is completely self-contained and, and it's different, you know. And there's, there's, a, there's two reasons why I do this. And the first one would have to be, it's so practical. I can jump on a plane with this guitar in a zip bag, fly to Germany, do a show, get on the plane and go back home. It's so easy, you know, and it's all self-contained. Um, and I used to miss playing with a band when I first started doing this. I don't anymore because it's, it's evolving, it's always evolving, and I'm always trying to write better songs and be a better player and all that kind of stuff. And it's just good experience, you know. But I just love the voice of the solo acoustic guitar. I always go for a, a big tone and a big sound and, and try to coax the the, the beauty out of the thing, you know, and, and when I play like a ballad or something, I try to leave l lots of space and leave things resonating against each other as a backing sort of thing, like a, like a painting behind it, you know. Uh, say for instance, if I was playing um, something like Mona Lisa. So, so if I was playing the, uh, this tune, um, and the, uh, the melody is very simple. There's chords going on there, and, and there's melody, and there's, there's resonating bass notes and things like that. And, so, and sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll do a, like a cluster of harmonics, and then and just let that hang on. Things like that, you know. I really, really love that sound. It's a, it, it's a, it has a particular beauty to it, you know, and you can add little things like that in the middle of songs and uh, just, uh, just adds all that nice stuff. CGP means Certified Guitar Player and it was something that was invented by Chet Atkins and a whole bunch of guys like governors and people like that in in Tennessee and uh, because of Chet's uh, incredible uh, dedication and, and body of work and, and influence on the whole world um, we decided or they decided that that um, uh, he should have some letters after his name like a you know a Bachelor of Arts or a well you know uh, the right honorable Ted Atkins that's who it should be you know there's now four CGPs in the world, and uh, the other one is Jerry Reed, uh, for his his incredible songs and his incredible style. You know, and no one has contributed 
more to fingerstyle guitar than Jerry Reed. And there's Dr. John Knowles, who's an arranger and a player, and uh, he's a good friend of Chet's and has been documenting all his arrangements all his life and is dedicated to that. And, and the fourth one is me. And um, my, my awards um, is for, what is it? Yeah, let me get the words right here. For lifetime contribution to the art of fingerstyle guitar. So it's a great honor. I think uh, because it's wood and wire and there's vibration going on there, there's something powerful about vibrations. You know, when, <coughs> when, when monks chant, you know, and it's a very, it's a deep vibra vibrating sound that goes all through their chest in here. And that, that uh, is said to, to really connect them to the spirit world. So I think there's something in that, you know. This vibrates and it, it causes people to, to feel something and they're moved and some, some people cry and they don't know why they're crying but they, they just have to cry because something needs to come out and music is a great uh, key to unlocking something and it's really, it's a good thing and it's an important job. What we do, playing music for people is a very important job in our life, it's good. who invented slide guitar. Was it the blues guys or was it the Hawaiians? Um, I think if you take a human being, a taut string and a hard object and leave them alone, eventually something's going to slide. You've got to be ready to just eat it, you know, just crash and burn and just not care about it and keep going. Like it can be an extension of your body if you want it to be, and I think it should be. So, and if you get it just right, if you can, it takes a little bit of a little bit of mucking around, but if you can get the, uh, get those guys in tune, the root and the fifth, you get a really beautiful... A lot of it's just, it's conventional techniques, but I just, I just kind of come up with my own ideas, so... I'd, uh, I sort of got into doing like almost pseudo pedal steel, so... It's a uh, Sears and Roebuck's 5 8 Craftsman socket wrench. Um, it's heavy, 
It uh, has a lot of... Uh, makes it easy for sustain and so forth. Uh, usually at home, when I'm playing an acoustic guitar, I'll use a glass one. And I used to use glass um, all the time, uh, but uh, when I joined Little Feet and I started touring and stuff, I was constantly breaking them, so Lowell just came over and stuck a socket wrench at my yeah. finger and said, here, <laughs> it'll never break, and if it does, I'll replace it for free. <laughs> This and, and the, the dual compressors and, you know, heavy gauge flat wound strings. So it's, uh, you know, it, um, that basically is, is the whole secret to the whole thing, really, is heavy gauge strings, you know. Uh, nice socket wrench. <laughs> Make sure all the tuning pegs are in line. No. <laughs> the physicality of lap guitar is a little different, obviously, but it really feels different mentally approaching it like this with the selfish setup with it all pointing up at you. <laughs> music that moves me and there's music that I don't get <laughs> and so you just look for the notes that move you and the stuff that doesn't doesn't do anything for you then you're best leaving that out <laughs> Hi, I'm Rod McCormack and uh, I get asked a lot about playing fast country guitar and um, today that's what we're going to talk about, coordinating your left and your right hand for some speed playing. So one of the tricks I think is actually getting your right hand to, uh, to just be nice and relaxed, no tension in the arm, a lot of people can do it for about 30 seconds and then their right arm tends to get a bit sore, so if you can just keep that nice and relaxed and uh, there's a few exercises you can try if you like, um, down and up strokes on your right hand and try and keep it nice and relaxed and uh, no tension and try a little bit more speed as you go. And things like that really help. I think one of the secrets is when you learn a tune, don't play it too fast. You should be able to play it at the slowest tempo that works to play it evenly through and then you can slowly build up your tempo. Um, one of the other things that I think you need to do is the coordination between your right and your left hand. Obviously at that speed things fly around pretty fast and um, your brain needs to be kind of controlling that about a bar ahead. The thinking needs to be ahead of where your fingers actually are. And um, otherwise I, tend to, I think that you tend to just, you know, play all the same old tried out licks that you've been playing for years. And if you keep your brain just that little bit ahead, you'll tend to uh, keep creating as you go. Um, so there's lots of things that you can do to help. I think playing scales is a really good thing. Um, ascending scale of thirds, which sound like this. And the same thing works in reverse, of course. You can go... So 
So let's see if we can't keep the left hand, the right hand, with the brain and bar ahead. We'll see how we go. we go. Yeah, but how many people have slagged that song? And if, you know, if you said to them, you got four notes, all right? You got to write a riff that will stand the test of time for about three or four decades. How many people could honestly pull it off? And like, Look at that, like, if Richie was sitting here right now, I bet he would, he would look at me and say, very good, you played it with your right hand fingers. Like, I'm sure he... No, Richie never played it like... No way. It's like, you got to really understand the mentality of the man and understand why he did it that way. So, it's beautiful, beautiful. It's simplicity, you know, it's E equals MC squared. That's what it is. The proper way. Yeah. Smoke on the water, yeah. Fire in the sky. 